Here we go in the first inning. Henry Scott and Mitchell for the Longhorns. And number one in the polls this week. Number one in a few polls, number two in a few. But clearly one of the best teams in the country and they have the Dickinson native back near her hometown leading things off. Yeah, just, just south of where we're standing here. And this is the future of Texas softball. The way that she's at the plate standing in, not gonna slap, playing some center field for them. Shows bunt and takes a strike. Good off-speed offering from Paris Lehman. Tracy Laycock is the home plate umpire. Terry Holt is over at first. Mike Burwell is the third base up. Paris is just looking to kind of find her rhythm, get her groove in this game. 0-2 pitch here. Such a rise for Paris Lehman. Had a good year two years ago at Nichols in the Southland Conference. Had elbow surgery, too many breaking balls for her. Went to the Florida Gulf Coast League last summer, and now she's the starting pitcher in the Big 12 debut against Texas. Such a turn of events in 12 months for Paris Lehman. Off-speed pitch, bounce to second, backhand play, Boutte, her throw is in time to get Caden Henry. This is a great defensive play for the Cougs. The ball was hit sharply up the middle, and Boutte was able to get over to it and make a nice play. We know that Henry has will. She gets down to first base in about 2.6 seconds, so Lair was able to get her out. A good start for Paris Lehman. And Brie Cantu facing her former team, and it's Mia Scott. Hitting 429, nine extra base hits. And she takes the ball. It's another homecoming of sorts for the Angleton native. Yeah, she's a junior this year. And last year, she led the team in total bases, runs scored. She has so much potential. She's very dangerous at the plate. She always plays hard. And she always looks very calm. Pitch just missed. The entire weekend is sold out. Coach Vesley talked about the excitement of that. Last sellout was against Oklahoma a few years ago, and Jocelyn Allo is chasing the career homer record. But the concourse is packed. They brought in food trucks. A lot of youth softball players here in attendance as well. And Lehman hits the inside. It's two balls, one strike. And I think Mia was just taking all the way. It was 2-0. Just, just make sure she gets another uh, opportunity to look at a good pitch here. A Paris Lehman grew up in Tupelo, Mississippi, won the state title there. We just saw Mike White in his sixth season at Texas. Lehman balances one in the dirt. You look at her numbers, 133 innings two years ago at Nichols in the Southland Conference. And we talked with her former coach, Coach White, said, you know, I'm partially to blame. Asked her to throw too many breaking balls, put too much strain on the elbow. She had Tommy John surgery but she's a reinvented pitcher as that's popped up into shallow right fields. On comes Cardin to make the catch and there's two down. That's the way this play should have gone. Defensively, if you're tracking the ball back as a second baseman, you wanna make sure your right fielder who's got wheels out there, Amanda Cardin calls her off. This is a, a, it looks like a complicated play, but this is a play that people learn when they're young and playing youth softball. Seventh start in right field for Amanda Cardin. It was Paige Holsey's job. Cardin, one of the captains, has earned that job here as we start Big 12 play. Jolie Mitchell takes downstairs for a ball. Mitchell hitting 452, nine extra base hits, and 10 walks against only three strikeouts. And she's a transfer from Notre Dame. Mike White says she's a very serious player, and she is looking to get herself on. Pitch misses inside. Her first hit this year was against UCLA early in February, wearing the Longhorn colors. Coach calls her maybe the grandma on the team because she's a little bit older. She's working on her graduate deg degree as well. Hitters count here for Jolie Mitchell. And the fastball in there for a strike. Mitchell from Rosebud, Arkansas. Hitting in the middle of this Texas order, which already set a program record, most runs scored in the first five games of the season. They scored 64 runs, and they did it against very good competition that opening weekend against San Diego and UCLA. There's a line drive into right center. It's down. It's going to roll to the base of the wall. Kennedy Thomas quickly to second. The tag. 
Not in time. It's a sliding double for Jolie Mitchell. And this ball is out over the outer part of the plate, and she just hits it to the opposite field exactly where it's pitched. Gets a little gap between right field and center field where KT has to tra uh, track it down out in the field close to the ballpark fence in the warning track, and Jolie slides in there safe. Esmond tried to apply the tag, and now it's Reese Atwood with another RBI opportunity. The nation's leader, 38 runs batted in in the first 20 games. And she pops it up high in the infield. It's Esmond, the shortstop, back on the dirt to make the catch in Lehman Strands 1. And this Paris looked great in this uh, circle this time. One of Texas's best pitchers from last season, the entire staff comes back. Sitsali Gutierrez. Sitsali is um, known well by Houston because she was recruited here by Coach Vesley. So they know what to expect. She's going to be in the lower part of the zone. Lots of ground balls and variety of speeds. First pitch swinging, Butte fouls it back. The transfer from Tennessee has been an anchor at the top of the order. First season in Houston, 15 walks, on-base percentage over 500. And Coach Vesley loves how she sees sometimes seven to 10 pitches per at bat. And she's a fantastic leadoff for the Cougs. Foul back, Gutierrez off to a very good start after an excellent freshman campaign. So far this season, 4-0. Tonight's rate, the parents are sixth start. 18 strikeouts against just four walks. And that's a good pitch there up out of the zone, maybe trying to get her to chase a rise ball. Rise balls are probably the most difficult uh, pitch to hit at this level because of the movement. And when the ball rises, so do your eyes. It's hard to lay off of it. Close pitch called the ball. A last season, Gutierrez, part of the Big 12 All-Freshman team. Five Texas players made that Big 12 All-Freshman team. 108 innings, second most on the Longhorns. And that's lying to left center. It's hit pretty well. It is gone. On to the berm from Lair Boutte. And Houston jumps in front. And Lair gets every bit of this pitch. The pitch is a little bit more of the white part of the plate, I think, than Sitlali wanted to be. The ball was up in the zone, and she absolutely tattoos this ball over the left center field fence and is hanging out with the, the key to the promised land here early in this game. First home run allowed this season in over 30 innings by Sitsali Gutierrez. And she gets this pitch, gets full extension, and just creeps out over the left field fence. This is a short port, so I know we're gonna see a lot of home runs from both of these teams. Just the third earned run allowed this season by Sitlali Gutierrez. Here's Kennedy Thomas, the transfer from Cal. She takes ball one. Thomas hitting 476, leads Houston with 30 hits in 21 games. Amazing 12 walks against just one strikeout. Good pitch in. And Texas is playing in a little bit on, on uh, Kennedy. Kind of, uh, you know, the corners are playing in a little bit, and the middle infield is playing about middle, thinking that there's an opportunity to possibly for her to slap, maybe lay down a bun here. That's over the outside for a strike. Alaire Boutte with her fourth homer of the season pulls into a team lead with Bree Cantu and Taria Coleman. Power and speed and on-base ability, the top of the order in Lair Boutte. And that's ripped down the right field line into the corner. Kennedy Thomas runs well. She's into seconds with the double. And whoever carried the Cougars' bats to the dugout, they need to carry them again the rest of this weekend because they're really coming out swinging. And they're swinging actually pretty early in the count. She tattoos this ball down the right field line. A good play made out there by Maloney, but KT is so quick, she's in at second standing. There's Jasmine Rollin. Houston, a very good offense.
Off to a good start here in the first with Jasmine Rowland, sixth year of college softball for Jasmine Rowland. She was an Arizona State transfer and has really been a great pickup in the transfer portal this year. And she takes a bit low. I think they want her to look extra base potential more often. She's been settling for singles. Her average looks very healthy at 377. On base percentage 444. But I think they see more power in that bat. Coach Vesley just told her to look a little bit up in the zone. And she Perfect. drills it to right center on cue and over the fence. A line drive two run homer for Jasmine Rollin and Houston has three runs here in the first. I think Coach Vesley called this perfect when she looked at Jasmine and said, make her have the ball up in the zone a little bit. And she hits an absolute BB out of the ballpark. It was probably out of the park in about 1.5 seconds. Made a solid landing out there underneath the Coug. And she's ready to celebrate with her teammates. And again, that key to the promised land is looking better for the Cougars thus far. Kristen Zaleski out to the circle. A rare crooked number allowed here by Silali Gutierrez. Again, only two earned runs allowed, and she's faced some very good teams. Seven combined innings against UCLA opening weekend. Allowed one run against Tennessee in the second weekend. Gave up one run in four innings against Stanford. She pitched against Louisiana. She's faced some of the best in the country. And this is her first tough inning of the season here tonight. Well, this game is about momentum. And if you can just have a small little timeout, maybe have your coach come and talk to you, kind of get everything reset to change the momentum that the Cougars have on their side at the moment. There's Bree Cantu. And that fouls off the right shin guard. Uh, Reese Atwood gingerly walking out to the circle. It was right off that right leg. What's well, just a nice courtesy thing to just get the catcher a moment to make sure she can get it shaked off, but she's a tough Texas kid and she certainly is not going to miss this game. And Bray Cantu facing her former team. Atwood back into the crouch behind home plate. And as Mike White told us, a very cordial departure from Texas via the transfer portal. They wanted to help her find a program where she'd get more playing time. Was part of a very crowded infield at Texas. Now in her second season at Houston, she's thriving here with the Cougars. She's supposed to be their number one RBI person as well. A bounce to the right side. Easy play there, Washington. Over to good. We see the Texas defense. It's a very good defense. Atwood behind the plate. Good. Washington, Martinez, and Scott. First to third in the infield. Dayton, Henry Maloney across the outfields. And as Coach White has said, we have speed, power, defense, and pitching. Everything is there for Texas this year. He said what remains to be seen is how well we perform under pressure. Now it's Taria Coleman. Started her career at Oklahoma. So one year there, then came back to her hometown to play for the Cougars. Her second season now with Houston. And last year, she had the highest on-base percentage of all the Cougs. Set a program record over 500 for Coleman last season. And it will be interesting to watch as that's drilled to right and gone. That thing left the yard so quickly. A line drive home run off the bat of Taria Coleman. And Houston has four runs here in the first. And Taria got every bit of this pitch. She absolutely clobbered it got out over the right field fence very quickly. And everybody here at Cougar Stadium that is wearing red is standing up right now. And she really drives this pitch, gets full extension, and hits it off of the sign out there in right field. And a pitching change here for Texas. Shorting, shortest outing of the season for Sitlali Gutierrez. Records one out here in the first. 
But this is the thing with Big 12 play. It's a long weekend, and she will get an opportunity to atone against Houston and, of course, LSU on Tuesday, beckoning for Texas. Looks like Estelle Check is going to be coming in. They're lefty. The entire pitching staff returns for Texas off the Super Regional team from last season. A check, a senior from Downers Grove, Illinois. Previously a transfer from NC State. And a different look. Lefty coming in. Right, and her best pitch is her changeup. And I think that's one of the things that Coach Vesley talked about in preparation for this week was she just tried to make some confusion on the uh, during practices, played loud music all practice, tried to shuffle things around to add some chaos to the Cougar practices. Here are the numbers for check. Seventh appearance. Yet to allow an earned run. And she's used to being in these big games. We've seen her in the Women's College World Series, and Texas ex is expecting to be one of those eight teams that get to the Women's College World Series again. Here's Shelby Smith, interesting two-way player, the first two-way player in years for Houston. Could see her on the mound later today or later this weekend, but her bat has been a difference maker and she squibs it towards short. Across the diamond for the second out, Smith is retired. And I like how she came out swinging first pitch just to keep the momentum going for the Houston team. Great defensive play out there by Vivi. Really, you can see the smoothness that she has playing shortstop and makes that look very easy. Here's Janaya Thomas. A everyday starter, her first two seasons, dealt with a bone bruise when the season began and then she had to fight for her position once again. It was a very deep outfield. The outfielders were hitting and Caitlin Nita had grabbed that left field job and she pops it up high on the infields. And the catch is made by Alyssa Washington, but Houston strikes for four here in the first. And I was expecting to see some home runs from both sides, and Houston's got the strike. In Space City, 78 degrees. The wind will change directions here at Cougar Softball Stadium. Alyssa Washington stands in. And she takes a strike, the first to ever wear the captain's C on her uniform in 28 seasons of Texas softball. She's a special player. She's really been playing a lot for her dad since her freshman year. He passed away, and she really focuses on lifting it up to him. I pop up into shallow left, and Yesman takes charge for the first out. And Alyssa just gets underneath this pitch a little bit, and it makes it a simple little play on the infield for Esman. Viviana Martinez now from the left side. Open stance, ready to bat against Lehman. And that just missed away. Martinez hitting 340. And playing excellent defense at shortstop. Described by Coach White as Miss Smooth out there in the field. I think the, one of the things that he gives that credit to is her father's from the Dominican. And really that, say, that movement that she had, he recognizes from the Dominican, uh, particularly the baseball players that play in the middle and field as well. Yeah, that certain swagger, the way she carries herself on the field, the way she handles a ground ball. Another hitter's count. Lehman has fallen behind 2-0 quite a bit, but she's always found that strike on 2-0 to make it 2-1. She's out there battling, and Coach Vess discussed how she's, you know, gets her gets the ball, gets her rhythm, gets her breath, and tries to keep herself 
with that kind of same forward momentum in between each pitch. Good off-speed pitch, but taken for a ball. I think the crowd wanted that to be called a strike, but great, great change up by Paris. All Big 12 freshman team last season for Viviana Martinez. Some of her mistakes in the field come because of her range. She gets to balls that many other shortstops don't get to. And she draws a walk here. She's on first with one out here in the second. This is a really good at bat. Uh, by uh, Viviana Martinez to get herself on first base. And that's what Texas is looking for here is just to string together some runners to get some hits and get some runs on the board. Well, Mike White in his sixth season, Super Regionals each the last four years. He has all of his pitching back from last year's team. Eight of the 10 starters back for the Longhorns. Leanne Good takes a strike. It's the 10th start of the season for good, hitting 375. At first base tonight. And led the team in doubles last year. Lines it to right. Cardin reads it well, makes the catch. And there's two down. Good retired on the lineouts. And she hit this ball solid. It was out over the middle part, middle outer part, half of the plate, and went oppo with it, and hit a line drive right to Cardin's glove. Cardin, a very experienced outfielder, makes all the routine plays. Ashton Maloney, ready from the left side against Paris Lehman. They called strike. Lehman issued that walk. She doesn't walk too many. Now 10 issued in over 45 innings. As Coach White told us, Maloney, all Big 12 freshman pick, still gets overlooked quite a bit when you look at this Texas softball team. And she's won, won a 100% slap. And we know that... The, that uh, Jasmine Rollin over at third base. She's going to be crashing. Essman's going to be ready. The whole goal is for her to put the ball in play and try to get down to first base as quickly as she can and advance the runner. Coach White says she's at her best with two strikes. She has an 0-2 count here against Lehman. And she takes just off the plate. Very good pitch by Lehman and a very good take by Maloney. And that's up and out. And Coleman tries to frame it over the black part of the plate, but it was just off. Chop toward second, Boutet charging, sidearm throw to first in time, and the side is retired. This is a really good job by Texas putting the ball in play. But it's Mandy Esman stepping in, and Coach Vesley continues to tell us that there is a lot of power in her bat. It just hasn't come out yet for the Michigan State transfer. And she said she's capable of so much more. She's been great, playing great defense at shortstop, but really wants to see this bat wake up. It's hit to short. Nice hands to her left, Viviana Martinez, across to good for the first out here in the second. And I like that she put the bat on the ball well here. It will build her confidence at the plate, strikes the ball hard. Martinez is out there, makes a routine play, makes that look very easy. Now it's Amanda Cardin. She bats ninth. She has the right field position. A battled old friend Paige Holsey for that position. As Coach Vest has given a lot of players opportunity, but Cardin's one of the captains, great teammate, great leader, and I think steady in right field. She's very confident out in right field. Actually, she's played left field as well and feels very comfortable. We've seen her play second base uh, over the years as well. Estelle Check has been outstanding this season. Has not allowed a run in 14 and a third innings. 10 strikeouts against only one walk. Nice off-speed pitch, handcuffed to Amanda Cardin. That was, that's the, her best pitch, is her changeup. Maybe one of the best pitches for the changeup in the conference. One and two on Cardin, top of the order, Lair Boutte coming up. It's ripped, 
Nice backhand play on the short hop by Leanne Good. She steps on the bag for out number two. Texas's defense is looking great uh, from our perspective up here in the booth. That was a shot by Carden, and uh, Good was able to snag it and make that play look very easy out there at first base. Here's Lair Boutte. Line drive home run back in the first inning. Really gave energy to that Houston dugout in this sellout crowd. That's driven down the left field line. Good outfield position there as Date makes the catch in foul ground. And that's some of those the strategic things that people are looking at with the analytics. Great position there for 12 series between Houston and Texas. And Houston, a four run first inning. Paris Lehman back to the circle with that lead to face Bella Dayton, who made a catch in foul ground to end Houston's turn in the second. Nine, one, and two here for Texas. She shows bunt, takes a bit high. And that's one of the things about Bella Dayton is how dangerous she is. She can hit away, she can slap, she can bunt. Never know what she might do at the plate. She loves her Italian roots, according to Coach White. Italian food, Italian walk-up music. We'll travel back to her ancestors' homeland in this offseason. And she learned how to speak Italian as well. Shea Paris Lehman must be careful. She continues to fall behind these Texas hitters. We're seeing a lot of 2-0 counts. I think this is our fourth one we've seen, and she's been able to get herself out of it and kind of control herself and kind of have that short memory in the circle, which is important to be successful. Again, bluffing bunt. She takes inside. Dayton hit him 405, 13 walks against only five strikeouts. Her on base percentage at 536. And she had that wrist surgery last season, so she's lost a little bit of that power that we were used to seeing her from last season, but still very successful at the box. And it's the outside, three balls, one strike. And she was taking all the way there. They need base runners to try to catch up with these Cougs. Off-season wrist surgery for Bella Dayton. Great speed, described as a thoroughbred, the way she gets out of the barn or the batter's box. And Lehman's battle back to work at full. Yeah, I think Bella was, you know, you have to look at this perfect spot that you can really drive the ball when you're ahead in the count 3-1. It was not in that spot for Bella, so she let it go by. Here comes the 3-2. Drilled into right field to base hit. It's pass card, and it rolls to the wall. Dayton takes a turn and hits the break. She thought about a triple. Instead, gets back to second with a leadoff double. This is top-notch softball drives the ball, and by the time Carden gets to the ball right at the warning track at the bottom of the fence, Bella is already at second base showing off her wheels, and then on top of that, an incredibly successful relay out from right field. Begging her coach to let her go three. Stop sign put up by Mike White. An aggressive turn at second, and now Caden Henry steps in. She bounced to second base her first time. That was the second hit for Texas. And that hits the outside. She continues to move it to both sides of the plate, not giving in to these Texas hitters. And maybe her kind of getting a little bit behind early in the count is keeping them a little off balance. Timeout called. Infielders meet with Paris Lehman. Mike White comes out. You have Steve Singleton, the fifth-year assistant coach. As White told us, I thought I was a competitor, and then I spent five years with Steve Singleton. Yeah, and he's a legit ball player in his own. was with the Minnesota Twins organization when he was playing ball in his time. 
One thing he's learned is how to throw BP, various pitches that the softball hitters have to hit. As Coach White told us, he's learned to throw rise balls and change ups to simulate what these Texas hitters will see in Big 12 play. And Coach White said he's good, but he's not quite as good as I am. You know, and Coach White played for the U.S. men's team as a right handed pitcher. I went to the count on Caden Henry atop the Texas order. That one gets away, one ball, two strikes. Dickinson, Texas, well-known football team, competing for state titles. And very part of the softball team. And now a freshman on the 40 acres. Off to a good start, hitting over 400. Bounce foul on the first base side, right past Hope Troutwine, the pitching coach. And as a freshman, that's a really, really good uh, ball that she just fouled off. It was really borderline right in on her hands, and she was able to make it foul to keep herself alive at the plate. A comparison for Caden Henry, big name, Janae Jefferson. Coach White says a ton of potential, tall, strong arm, trying to get her to have more range. She stayed back on that pitch and fouled it off. That was a really good pitch by Paris Lane and changed it up a little bit. She tried to stay back and really talented, really good at bat here by uh, Henry. She was, he was talking about how Janae Jefferson, such a talented player, she played in the infield, but for the Olympic team, she could play in the outfield. So a very talented player. Janae Jefferson grew up here in the Humble area. Good take from Henry. It's two balls, two strikes. Some whistles from the Houston dugout. I think it's been a good zone so far from Tracy Laycock, the home plate umpire. She's given those borderline pitches, but not too far. And Coach Vesley has talked about her staff adjusting to the tighter strike zone in the Big 12 compared to what they were used to in the American the last few seasons. There is a hard ball up the middle off the glove of Butte. And Texas is on the board. Dayton comes in on the hard ground ball from Caden Henry. And this is a, a great at bat by Caden. That ball is again middle in on her hands. And she's able to hit a sharp line drive off of Butte's glove and able to score Bella Dayton from second for their first RBI of the game. Here comes Hope Troutwine. Won the national title with Oklahoma two years ago. As Coach Vesley told us, as she joins the circle visit to talk with the infielders, there were 10 to 12 candidates for the new pitching coach job at Houston. And now she faces Mia Scott, who popped into shallow right field her first time. Good block from Coleman. Keeps Henry at first. Very good work there behind the plate. Really dropping to her knees and keeping that ball out in front of her. Henry's got wills, so that kept her at uh, first base safely. Henry's running, and you see the speed on display. She steals second without a throw. Eighth steal of the season in 10 tries for Caden Henry. And that ball was down in the dirt a little bit. It was a little bit difficult for Taria to, to uh, handle. But Henry's able to get down there very easily. Mia Scott in her third season with Texas. Approaching 150 starts already. Takes outside. One of four key players still on the team from the 2022 team that reached the College World Champ Series and lost to Oklahoma. We have Scott, Alyssa Washington, Bella Dayton, and Estelle Check, who's in the game in the circle for Texas. And Scott walks on four pitches. All of a sudden, Lehman's losing control here in the third. Yeah, they're, they're putting that pressure on, and that's one of the things that you want to see how student athletes respond in this situation is 
when you start to get runners on with these big bats of Mitchell and Atwood coming up behind them, how they respond to this. A pitching change here for Houston. And here comes Shelby Smith. And Shelby Smith. Jolie Mitchell stands in. Two on, nobody out. First pitch, a high fly ball. Off the video board. A three run shot on the first pitch to Jolie Mitchell. And the Longhorns have tied it at four. And Jolie Mitchell gets every bit of this ball and elevates it to the very top of the scoreboard and actually cracks part of the U of H scoreboard as it exits the ballpark. And immediately when it left the bat, you could see that Shelby Smith knew it was out of here. Third homer of the season for Jolie Mitchell. And Texas has a four spot of its own, answering Houston's four run first inning. Reese Atwood now, and she takes outside for a ball. In her first at bat, she really swung kind of early in the count, so we didn't really give her a chance to, to uh, barrel up anything. But this is a, a different pitcher, obviously. She hasn't faced Shelby Smith before, so she'll be wanting to see a few pitches here. A bit low. Mitchell came from Notre Dame last season, 10 homers. She had seven homers in her first two seasons. Now Mitchell has three already this season. Atwood popped up to shortstop her first time. Now he's facing Paris Lehman. Smith misses, three balls, no strikes. A new batting stance for Reese Atwood after her all Big 12 freshman season last year. Adjusted the stance, put a lot of work in the cage, and the results have been there. Yeah, her lower body just stays so quiet. Jammed into shallow right. Here comes Cardin. It's Boutte, the second baseman, with an over-the-shoulder catch. That's interesting that she got the green light on that 3-0 by Mike White. Normally 3-0, you're taking all the way, but she's a big hitter, potential player of the year, so he gave her the green light to let her swing away on 3-0. There's Alyssa Washington. She also popped a shortstop her first time. She hammers that to left. A rocket onto the berm. Texas in front, a solo shot from Alyssa Washington. And Alyssa came out swinging. She's fired up for her team, the captain of the Longhorn team. But she hits a major, major laser out to the berm, got out of the ballpark in about two seconds. A lot of celebration over there with Texas. But the ball traveled pretty quickly, and she knew about the time that she hit uh, touch first base that it was going to be out of the ballpark. A five-run third inning for the Longhorns. Viana Martinez, lefty on lefty here, and a fastball gets away. One thing that Coach Vesley talked about with Shelby Smith was she gets kind of gets a little bit emotional, can get a, get a little bit in, in her head. This is one of those times where she's really just got to slow herself down, control her thoughts, get her pitch, get her rhythm, keep the ball down. That's over the inside for a strike, one and one. Martinez walked her first plate appearance against Paris Lehman. Houston's a bit thin in the pitching department as Tamaya Waiters gets loose. Cougars entered the season with four pitchers. Nicole Badeau left with an injury a few weeks ago and has not returned. So at the moment, three pitchers for Houston. Again, no returning pitchers off last year's team. It's a very good offensive team. The pitching is still a bit of an unknown for Coach Vesley and Houston. Popped into foul ground, long run for Janiyah Thomas, and she runs into the wall and makes the catch. 
tremendous play by Janiah out there, even with coming off of an injury, making one of her, her second uh, appearance this season out there in left field, makes a great play, and also gets another great player out in the inning. And just crashes, no holds barred into that fence. Leanne Good with two down. Was jammed a bit and fouled it back. Leanne Good, all Big 12 freshman team last year, all region. She also had wrist surgery last season. Trying to find a defensive position for her, a spot in the order. She's hitting seventh tonight. Mike White talked about how many great players that he has and that it's such a cool thing to be able to have so many great players on the team as well as so many great coaches on his team. Just outside for a ball. Coach White said he's excited where Leanne Good is heading right now. She's very hard on herself. He says, you're not gonna bat 700. You have to live with failure more often. Right, right. Chops this to third, fair ball. Nice play, throwing from a knee there by Jasmine Rollin. And Good put it in play. And uh, Jasmine Rollin is doing her thing over at third base. That's where she hangs out and makes the play look pretty easily. But this is that home run, back-to-back -back home runs, even with Alyssa Washington, gets out of the ballpark quickly and Texas takes the lead. Kennedy Thomas standing in. The center fielder ready to go lefty on lefty as Check misses low. Check has settled in really nicely here. Out of the bullpen. In relief of Sitlali Gutierrez. And Check just continues to make the most of her opportunities this season. Yeah, she looks like she's just kind of catching her rhythm a little bit out in the circle here in the bottom of the third, has actually pitched most of the game except for one out. Outside for a ball. She has actually over the outside for a strike, excuse me, one and two. She will surpass 300 career innings this season. 103 and two thirds her career high two years ago. Chopped towards shortstop. Martinez has it strong, throw to first to get the speedy Kennedy Thomas. And this is a good job by Kennedy Thomas to get the ball in play. The ball's a little bit out of the strike zone, but she's able to put it on the ground to give her a chance to be safe there at first base, but pounds it into the ground. But Vivi hangs out there, makes the play look routine. Jasmine Rollin lined a two-run homer over the wall in Houston's four run inning. But it's still check. ERA below 3.24 in every season. She fills a variety of roles for Coach White. 42 career starts, 82 total career appearances. One year at NC State, now in her third season at Texas. And there's a soft squibber to third. Scott has it, strong throw to first. Rollins retired, two down for check here in the third inning. Yeah, and Jasmine hits this over to third base where she hangs out defensively, and Mia Scott's able to scoop that up and make a nice play over to first base. We've seen Mia over the years play second base. We've seen her play some short. We've seen her play some third. Makes that play look routine for her as well. Here's Bree Cantu. Cantu grounded out to second. That was the first out in the first inning for Houston. A chance to break the Houston all-time RBI record, which is 64. She's about halfway there. Bounces it back to second. Washington over to first, a very nice inning for Check. I really like the way this infield is playing. Shortstop got to show off, third base. UCF, Texas Tech to follow. Houston with the point to prove in year one in the Big 12. And Shelby Smith misses high to Maloney. We do have some scores from across the opening weekend. Texas Tech has beaten BYU twice, so a good start for the Red Raiders. Oklahoma hosting Iowa State. Oklahoma State is at Baylor tonight. 
In this game, Shea, Houston scored four times against Hitlali Gutierrez in the first inning, but Texas knocked down Paris Lehman in the third. They got to Shelby Smith in the third, and the Longhorns bat here now at the 5-4 lead. And I think that's what we were expecting from this game is what was going to happen with the bats and how were the pitchers going to try to keep the ball in the ballpark. And we've seen that come to fruition thus far. Maloney sprays it foul down towards the Texas bullpen, which is empty. Maloney grounded out to second base her first time. Coach White joked that she led them in hitting last year. And he asked her, how'd you do that? She's just a very steady player at the plate. And there's a line drive to third. Well positioned, Jasmine Rollin for the catch. I really like how Jasmine Rollin plays her third base position. She's aggressive, gets up onto the plate if she needs to, plays back, plays quick. Very smart student athlete over there at third base for the Cougs. Quick shot, no doubt about that. She almost was so aggressive she could charge that line drive. Before the opening weekend, Coach Vasily called Jasmine Rollin the glue of the infields. Dayton takes downstairs for a ball. She doubled in the third. That ignited the rally, a leadoff double from the number nine hitter. And when it was all said and done, Texas had five on the scoreboard. Well, she had a 3-0 count in that at bat. And it looked like she was going to walk pretty easily and ended up 3-2 in that count and had a double. She's real dangerous if she gets out on the bases. You know, we've seen her run. Coach White had to stop her, give her a stop sign out there at second base. With no outs, he didn't want to have her be out, potentially out at third. But she's got a lot of tools in her toolbox. You know, Jasmine's up there in her back pocket waiting for her to lay down a bunt so she can throw her out. Yeah, tremendous base running from Dayton. She was just exploding past first. Big turn at second, held up. And back before a tag at second. And that just missed high. Shelby Smith thought that was strike two. Yeah, it was certainly close. And this is a 3-1 count. So, you know, really a ball that was maybe just off the black part of the plate. Coleman tried to frame it there to get that called strike. And that's a pitch that at Seton Hall might have been called a strike here in the Big 12. It's called a ball. And Dayton draws a walk. Coach Vesley has talked about. The staff, the pitchers adjusting to what a power five strike zone looks like. It's tighter than the non-power five. It is, and that's okay. You just have to learn what that strike zone is for the umpire. I mean, Bella Dayton has another great at bat, gets herself on for potentially another opportunity to score here for the Longhorns. Old teammates, Bree Cantu and Bella Dayton sharing a quick word there at first base. Dayton has three steals and three tries this season. It's a big secondary lead, a bluff of a bunt there from Caden Henry. Pitch called a ball. And this is something early in the season, you know, early at least in the conference, Coach White's going to put on a play here. He wants to see what his freshman can do at the plate. He's got a senior base runner out on the base paths. He wants to put a little bit of pressure on the Houston defense. Hit to left, hit very well. Back goes to Naya Thomas. She looks up. An opposite field home run from Caden Henry. The ball now flying out for the Longhorns. Texas extends its lead to 7-4. And in the previous pitch, she was showing bunt to Jasmine Rollin and then sits back on this ball and drives it with her barrel head to the opposite side of the ballpark for a home run for the freshman from Dickinson. And she gets all of this pitch, goes the other way with it. It's hit thrown over the outer half part of the plate and right off of the scoreboard. She's pumped. Such strength for Henry. She swung late on that, just kind of a flick of the wrist, and it was way out of here and left. Here's Mia Scott, who takes ball one. Yeah, she, she really looked great at the plate. That tells you the diversity that she has. She can bunt, she can slap, and she can hit away. Fifth home run of the season for the Texas leadoff batter, Caden Scott. Now, Caden Henry, I should say, as Mia Scott takes a strike. Now, Mia walked and scored in the third. 
And even though she's 0-2 already in this at bat, she's still very calm. Kind of one of those, uh, you know, check her heartbeat and make sure she's still alive type of athlete when she's in the box. What a great career for Mia Scott. Hit 377 as a freshman on the College World Series team that went to the Champ Series and lost to Oklahoma. Hit 377 again last year, hitting over 429 this season. A very good eye at the plate. I mean, she's 0-2. Both of those pitches are close-ish, enough to try to get her to, you know, swing at it, maybe have a little excuse me type of swing, but she's able to hold herself at the plate and 2-2 evens up the count. Popped up high in the air to right. Cardin comes in. Blair Boutte, the second baseman, makes the catch. Two down here in the fourth. And she just missed this pitch. She got under it just a little bit. She knows it. But uh, great play by Lair Boutte out there in shallow right field, celebrating a little bit with Amanda out there, getting that second out. Jolie Mitchell, an impressive home run, a three-run shot. The difference in this game right now, a frozen rope over the wall in left field. That was the first pitch Shelby Smith threw out of the bullpen, a relief to Paris Lehman, a rude greeting from Jolie Mitchell. Yeah, she was. She saw that pitch in HD. I mean, it was out of the ballpark very quickly. Over the outside for a called strike. Coach uh, White talked about how Jolie might not have the very best swing on the team but she always knows how to get herself on. He expects her to be on base at least twice a game. Two years left of eligibility for Jolie Mitchell, already working on her master's degree. As Coach White told us, she's used to doing things her own way and the staff has to mold her into doing things their way. Well, so far I think they're pleased with what she's done here in Houston tonight. No swing on appeal, good back control there from Jolie Mitchell and the count is now two and two. Outfield is very deep. Kennedy Thomas is standing just a few feet shy of the dirt in center. About as, out as, it, about as deep as an outfield can play. Off speed misses, the count is full. I think this is one of those times where Shelby just kind of slows herself down, finds her perfect pitch, takes a look in there at Taria, and makes a good pitch with movement. Here with 3-2, two, two outs. Good at bat, Mitchell draws a walk. In her career, she has more walks than strikeouts. Entering tonight, 51 walks, 47 strikeouts across five college seasons. And we didn't talk about Mitchell, you know, defensively, but she can play both first base or third base for Texas. Her 11th block this season has her at first on base percentage over 540. Here's Reese Atwood. Atwood is 0 for 2, popped up twice. In her last at bat, she got a green light 3-0 just to try to get her a little bit more comfortable here at Cougar Softball Stadium. And Shelby staying away from her, staying out over the plate. If you look at the hot spot for Reese Atwood, she likes the ball middle down, and like middle in and down is probably her favorite pitch to hit where she really drives the ball the best. She pulls that foul right on the hands. And that was the pitch that she wanted. That is right in her hot zone. Leads the country entering play tonight with 38 RBI. Third in the country with 10 homers. Fourth in the country, slugging over 1,000. Coach White has talked about her changes to her swing, and now she can hit from her ankles up to her helmet, really adjusting to the pitches that 
opposing pitchers are now throwing to her. Off-speed pitch is taken for a ball. Mitchell steals second. Good pitch selection on the steal there. And now she's in scoring position. I do like what Shelby's doing here with Atwood at the plate. She's staying, keeping the ball middle and out, and then just went another uh, away from her and down in the zone. Two balls, two strikes. It's a right, long run for Cardin, and it bounces foul. No activity down in the Houston bullpen. Smith seems to have settled in here at the fourth. She is, I mean, she's hard on herself out in the circle, but she's reset herself a bit. She's got two out, she's two and two here with Outwood. This is always a difficult count to actually get a hit on, but if she can keep the ball down and away like she's done in this at bat with Atwood, I think it's gonna keep the ball in the ballpark. And that hits her in the helmet. She's okay, she'll take first. Pitch up and in, catches her in the helmet. Yeah, and th this, is, this is just a, a, an oops and down. This came out of her hand a little, a little oddly. She is not trying to injure anyone in the game. Gets a free bas uh, base for Atwood. Atwood on first. Mitchell at second, Smith trying to work out of the fourth. Alyssa Washington, she homered to left field her last time. Takes that over the outside for a strike. And knowing Alyssa, she's able to make adjustments during her at bat. That ball was really on the outer part of the plate. I wouldn't be surprised here if she just doesn't turn her eyes and look that way and drive it to right field. First Texas player to ever wear a C on the jersey for Texas softball. It was just a feeling Coach White had. He talked to the assistant coaches about it. Asked the players, who would your captain be? And the overwhelming favorite among the players was Alyssa Washington. Coach White brought her in, told her. She started crying, tears of joy. Said, I've always wanted to play for Texas. Now I'm the captain and have the C on my chest. She lifts that to right. Cardin underneath it. Washington flies out. Smith strands too. Yeah, I think I think that uh, the Cougs are years. Taria Coleman leads things off and fouls it back. She had a line drive home run to right, and that was part of that four run inning. Houston does not have a hit since the first inning. Yeah, and she came out swinging early in the count, which is what made her successful in her previous at bat. Coleman, a freshman season at Oklahoma, won a national championship. Beating Texas in the Champ Series. Transferred back to her hometown before last season. And now facing Texas. Back in the Big 12 after one season in the American. A truly special player. She can play shortstop, she can play third, she can play catcher all across the field. You can hit her one to nine, she can hit for power, she can bunt, she can run. Just an all around softball player. Yeah, and she grew up in this area and, and, and probably one of the most talented players to come from the Houston area, even though she went to OU for a little while, it was good to really, uh, with Houston, have her come home. And she's on first base. First walk issued by Estelle Check. And Coleman can run. And she is a savvy base runner there at first base. and. Houston is looking for some base runners, maybe string together a few hits here with Shelby Smith. Coleman four for five stealing bases this season. Smith takes a strike. Smith grounded out to shortstop. Her first at bat. Trying to help her cause. Defense is playing straight up for Texas. And the dirt well blocked behind home plate by Reese Atwood. Last season as a hitter at Seton Hall, hit 340, eight homers, nine doubles. A career 325 hitter across five college seasons. Bounces that foul off the screen in front of the Texas dugout. More walks than strikeouts last year at Seton Hall. 
Went to Lutheran South Academy, south of Houston. Battling here against Czech and a one-two count. Bounce to third, Scott has it to second. The relay is dropped at first by Good. It would have been a double play, but Smith is aboard as Good could not handle the low throw cleanly. And I think this was a little bit of Coleman uh, affecting the turn at second to be able to get Smith out and Good just couldn't quite squeeze it well enough to make that double play happen. But put the ball in play well rolled it over to second and I think a lot of that was Alyssa's interruption with Coleman trying to take her out and the ball just trickled away from good. Janiah Thomas takes a strike. She popped up to second base her first time. She committed to Houston verbally age 12 or number 10. Houston softball lore. But a bit of adversity this year. She had to deal with that bone bruise and then was not just given her jaw back in left field. Michaela Nita, the freshman from Southern California, really got off to a good start, especially at the plate. You had Paige Holsey, a returning starter, playing right. Kennedy Thomas in center field, the transfer from Cal. And the training staff was very careful with Janiah Thomas, maybe too careful in Janiah's eyes. And now she... Is hit by the one-two pitch and she'll take first. She kept telling Coach Vesley, I'm ready to go. Coach Vesley said the training staff thinks otherwise. And after a while, she finally got an opportunity. Her first hit bat of the season hit a homer. Yeah, I mean, she's a really talented athlete. She's played almost everywhere on the field with the exception. And she takes this ball right off of her elbow. She doesn't wear all the gear that we see a lot of the softball and baseball players wear around the country. Just lets that bounce off of her elbow and takes her free bag. Incredible, she hit just one home run her first two seasons across 240 at-bats. She has three homers already this season and 12 at-bats. Now the umpires will confer in front of the circle. I think they're trying to decide, did Janiah try to get out of the way at all or did she just let that hit her? It was a change up and sometimes, you know, you remember when you were little, you're like, hey, just let that hit you to make yourself a base runner, which is what Houston needs at this point but you have to at least make an attempt to get out of the way. A shake of the head back towards the Texas dugout. So the umpires agree that was a proper hit by pitch. Coach Vesley is gonna bring on a pinch runner. And it certainly, she wasn't fearful of it knowing that it was a change up, but that's some of the you know, the little special things about playing softball, you know, do you let it hit you? Do you try to flinch a little bit? Do you get out of the way? Do you get into the way? And that's some of those nuances that makes this game special. Jordy Wilkins into pinch run out at second. Tremendous speed, maybe the fastest outfielder on the team. Mandy Essman takes low. And Mandy Essman's a dangerous hitter. She could tie this game with one swing. She has excellent power. Maybe more than the stats show, according to Coach Vesely. She keeps saying, just wait. You have to see her. The exit velo for Mandy Essman is impressive. That's over the inside for a strike. And part of that confidence that she needs is really just focusing on what her hot spot is, where she can pick up the ball and drive it, and really focus that and take that plan to the plate. She fouls it off. Coach Vest says she has gotten herself out too much this season. If she stays with the plan and stays with those hot zones, she'll have more success. She's chased too many pitches not in those hot zones. That's some of the challenge when you come from playing in a different conference to come and playing in the Big 12 as well. Good protection there on a one-two pitch from Czech. Still Czech has been outstanding. Three innings, no hits, just one walk. And that ball was off of, off of the backstop coming back for I'm part of the coach blue or, or the blues ahead there behind the plate and Atwood saved her back there making that snag. And Espin will take first. Yeah, it looked like it hit her on her on her right leg, maybe right above her knee. And they're gonna have a little chat here, hear it back in slow motion. Looks like as she goes to stride, just catches her right in the front of the knee and then hits off of Atwood's leg. 
The base is loaded in the first. Earth one down here in the fourth. Carden, part of that pre-pitch routine Coach Fast loves. Take a breath, get in the box, make it very consistent. Protects there, it's 1-1. It does really kind of calm you down when you're at the plate. Slow your things down. I, I know we have that 20 second pitch clock to work with. It's the pitch and hitter's clock in that 20 seconds. But if you can clear your mind, try to let your eyes work, let your hands work here with the bases loaded. Carden fouls it off. She's been late on these fastballs from Check. Excellent speed on the bases. Jordy Wilkins, the pinch runner at third. Janiah Thomas at second. Mandy Esman over at first. The wind is blowing across the field towards left center. And I agree with you. I think the Czech's kind of throwing the ball just pretty straight into the plate. Squib towards third. The play is at first. No tag at first on the wide throw from Scott across to good. Wilkins, the pinch runner, scores. Makes it 7-5. to five. And the bases remain loaded as Coach White comes out of the Texas dugouts. Coach White's going to ask about whether the tag was actually applied, wants them to take a look at it. Here where Carden puts the ball in play. She catches the ball up the line. You know, it's very difficult to see. I almost thought she might have got the backside of her ponytail, which is still part of the runner. They're going to discuss it. Tracy Laycock, the home plate ump. It was Terry Holt's call, the first base umpire. And Mike Burwell... A third base up offers his opinion. Hey, Coach Singleton over there behind Coach White is talking to Good about how she might have been able to receive that ball in order to make that play a little bit more clean. Still coaching over here during this break where they discuss. And now White will formally challenge this. They confer, they talk it over, they call save. He challenges. This Big 12 umpire crew will jog down to the right field shed to look at the video system. Amanda Carden talking with Hope Troutwine, the pitching coach who also coaches first. And we always see good report on there for the current pro player to Hope Troutwine. Just a couple of years removed from her college playing career. Always seems to relate well with the Houston players at first. Absolutely. I think they enjoy coming down there and chatting with her. And we've got Atwood and good and check they're discussing you know how they feel about this they they'd like to be able to get this out and and get themselves out of the inning the two outs in the game the cool thing about you know having this replay is the opportunity to get it right you know they these student athletes they spend so much of their time away from their families they spend so much of their time getting their education and they want to also have the opportunity to go to the Women's College World Series in Oklahoma City. And getting these plays in these small little areas correct is very important. And we've talked about this as a game of inches. And this goes down to that being a game of inches to be able to make sure that they get this right. And we look back at this again. It does look like Good's arm makes contact with Cardin's arm, but I'm not sure if the glove made contact. They're taking their time to make sure they get this right. Here's another angle. It almost looks like there is daylight there between the actual leather on her glove well, it's really close to tell there if there's any green that you can see between the leather and the white part of her uniform. Great angle, camera crew. Leanne, good. Clearly, it seems at least her arm and elbow hits Carter, but does the leather of her mitt catch the base runner? I think that's the important question. You can see Hope Troutwine, her right hand, has all the tape across the finger showing how often she pitches to this Houston team. And part of that is that she's relaying the play and the pitch call into uh, Taria Coleman when she's behind the plate. You put the tape on your finger so you can see your fingers a little bit better against the black part of her pants when she's sitting over in the dugout. Uh, 
Mike White in his sixth season. Very pleased with the start for his team, trying to position themselves to host a potential Super Regional. Big reason for the challenging schedule, the first month of the season, continues at LSU next week. And the umpires come out. Yeah, and they're an eight game win streak. I mean, they want to battle. Looks like they got the play correct, the call correct on the field. Umpires relay no conclusive evidence to overturn that call. First earned run of the season allowed by Estelle Check. And now it's Lair Boutte at the top of the order. Bases remain loaded. And she takes up and in. Activity down at the bullpen. Two pitchers getting loose for Texas. Boutte a home run to left her first time. She fly to left her last. She pops it up towards shortstop. Tough play. It falls in. Janiah Thomas scores. Esman stops at third. Houston back within a run on a blue hit from Lair Boutte. And Estelle Check is consistent. She's keeping the ball on the inner half on the hands of these left-handed hitters. And Lair's just strong enough to kind of muscle that over an excellent shortstop and get herself an RBI. Kennedy Thomas doubled down the right field line her first time. Bounces to second. A look to second and a wide throw past. Good at first. Two run score. Esman followed by Carden. And Houston has four across in this fourth inning. Back in front, eight to seven. And defensively, Texas was playing in to protect this run. The, balls trickles, the ball trickles slowly to Washington at second base. And even this, though this doesn't look like anything very difficult, when you shift your eyes to look all the way back and then turn back to first, sometimes your throw can be off just a little bit. And it's usually to the right, which makes everyone safe. Unusually shaky defense from Texas here in the inning. Two wide throws. One from Mia Scott at third. That one from Alyssa Washington. There's Jasmine Rollin. A two in scoring position. And Texas defense is still playing in. They're playing to try to protect that run at the plate. Check had no problem. I don't allow a base runner until this fourth inning. It's bounced foul. That was a really good pitch on her part. She just took just enough of it off to change the, the rhythm of Rollin at the plate. Rollin chased that one. He lead off walk proved costly here for Check. Walk. Ground out, hit batter, hit batter. And Texas would say both of the hit batter calls were borderline and controversial. Janaya Thomas maybe lowered the elbow into it to earn a free trip to first. And then Mandy Esman also may have leaned into it. Back-to-back -back hit batters. Now followed by Cardin hitting it to third. And a wide throw. Opened the door to Lair Boutte's bloop single, and then another throw in error from Melissa Washington. Yeah, really uncharacteristic of the Texas team. But, you know, when you start applying pressure, you can see where some of these weaknesses might lie. That smash to left center, slicing and over the fence. A line drive homer for Jasmine Rollin, her second long ball tonight, and a three run shot. As Houston in front, 11 to seven. Jasmine Rollin got the pitch that she was looking for out over the middle part of the plate and just ropes it. I thought it was gonna hit off of the wall and ricochet all the way back into shortstop. It was hit so hard. 
Great stroke there by Jasmine Rollin, really building her confidence, moving her up in the lineup for the Cougars. She had two homers on the season before tonight. She has two long balls tonight as Mike White comes out of the dugout. Uh, a little more conversation here at the home plate umpire, Tracy Laycock. Check was excellent until that leadoff walk to Taria Coleman. And that was really the first hard hit ball against Check in this inning. Everything else was hit on the ground. You had the blue pit from Lair Boutet, and that was a screaming line drive slicing out to left center. Yeah, and I think that she just was really to get able to get her timing in changed in that at bat and drive the ball out to left center field. That's as hard a ball. We've seen a lot of all freshman team. 29 appearances, 16 starts for the Texas team that reached the College World Series Champ Series. Here's Brie Cantu. Last year, 26 appearances at a 2.6 ERA with two saves. She was really good against the lefties last year. Lefties. Hit 104 against Sophia Simpson last season. Coach White said he hasn't played her, you know, a whole lot. She did play last week and had eight strikeouts. Wanted to plan on seeing her again this weekend. Just not so sure he wanted us to see her this early in the weekend. Tremendous strikeout stuff. 26 strikeouts in 14 innings for Sophia Simpson. That pitch is low. Three balls and a strike on Brie Cantu. Yeah, and At Atwood was trying to squeeze that and make it a strike and frame it. And she just barely lost it over the end part of her glove. Can't do a board on a five pitch walk. And she just loses the, the stick on this pitch a little bit and leaves it up in the zone. Taria Coleman bats for the second time this inning. She started this rally with the walk. And to still check. Tries to bunt at it. And it's 0 and 1. And Taria's got Will. She just wants to see how they're going to play her defensively. You know, generally your third baseman is going to be your best defender. They've worked this week on trying to bring the ball up toward first base whenever they're bunting. That gets away. Atwood will throw down. Cantu takes second. And Coach Vest has said time and again as we see this ball in the dirt and Cantu down to second. She makes a great read on this and makes herself safe, easy to stand up. Abwood probably should have just put that in her pocket rather than take a chance and throw it out center field. Coach Vestley has said that their offense has a lot of power five experience. Larry Brute came over from Tennessee, has played in the College World Series. Kennedy Thomas, four years at Cal. The player at the plate, Taria Coleman, won a national championship at Oklahoma two years ago. Jasmine Rowan, experience in the Pac-12 with Arizona State. Cantu, of course, at Texas for a couple years after a freshman season at Texas Tech. So the top five in the order, each with significant Power Five experience, and it's produced this 11-run entry into the Big 12 here tonight. And I think for, for Taria, she needs to see the ball down. She's been looking up, 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 laying off of it. Good pitch with movement on 3-1, works the count full. Yeah, and I, that was just the pitch that she wasn't looking for. It was a little off speed. Simpson has been throwing her up, up, and a little bit higher. And she's going to have to open herself and protect herself here with two strikes. Coleman was fooled. The throw down to first, advancing to third, Brie Cantu, as Coleman strikes out. 
She was still able to advance the runner to third, even the runner to third with two outs. There's an opportunity for her to score if they get the ball onto the green. Simpson coming off one of her best outings. Had eight strikeouts against UT Arlington on Wednesday. We talked with Coach White on Thursday. He said Simpson was very good last night. Good change up and rise ball for the number 99 in the burnt orange. Shelby Smith was trying to keep her team close. She did a good job working out of that fourth inning, limiting the damage to two runs, and now she stands in. The two-way player has seen a response from her offense. 2-0. And, oh. and she's seen both her changeup and her, it, actually that looked like a down ball. That looked like she was throwing a drop even though Simpson mostly is a rise ball out of the zone and then a devastating changeup. So she's seen bo both speeds from Simpson thus far. Atwood doing an awesome job behind the plate, just really keeping that ball in front of her. 3-0, we'll see if Coach Vess is having her take all the way with Janaya up on deck. Shea, extra base hits have been one of the stories tonight. Texas has six hits, five extra base hits. Houston also has six hits. Cougars with five extra base hits. And there's another hit for Houston into left. Good swing there from Shelby Smith. Cantu scores from third. Shelby Smith helping herself, and it's 12-7 Houston. And she really doesn't even get all of this pitch. And if you look at this, I mean, it's an absolute worm burner that goes out past the shortstop for Texas. Just really smokes it. Gets herself an RBI. 13th RBI of the season for Smith. Now it's Janiya Thomas. She was hit by the pitch again. This is one that Texas was not pleased with. Coach White came out of the dugout. It felt like Janiya Thomas lowered that elbow. Coach White comes back out of the dugout to talk again. Now he'll walk towards the circle. But the Texas bench displeased with Janiya Thomas as she was hit by the pitch. The umpires talked it over after White challenged it. They agreed that it was a legal hit by pitch and she did not lean into it. You know, this is pitcher talking to pitcher. You know, Mike White was a pitcher at a very high level in, in men's softball. Just wants to make sure everybody is on the same page. If you notice, Atwood actually went out and talked to the infield as Coach White was chatting with Sophia. One count on Janiya Thomas. Now first true adversity of the season for Texas, Shea. They've lost only once, 4-3 loss against Stanford in eight innings. A first time their pitching's been Hit hard first time, a shaky defensive game for the Longhorns. But time still left for Texas, this dangerous offense. Now 64 runs, most ever scored by Texas in the first five games of the season. Out of the tournament hosted by UCLA. No lead is safe against the Longhorns. There's that change up again that we talked about from Simpson. She hung it up in the zone a little bit. Sometimes you gotta think about if they hang it, you gotta bang it, you know? So if they, Thomas is able to stand back, she can hit the ball out to the green and give the Cougs another opportunity at the plate. Thomas takes it, count is full. Simpson a long look after that call. Smith will get a head start here with two down. On this 3-2 pitch, Houston has scored eight runs here in the fourth. Lifted to left, Dayton towards the line, makes the catch and the inning is over. 
But the Cougars, an eight run fourth inning. Jazz, Brent Orange across Cougar Softball Stadium. A sellout crown tonight, sellouts all weekend. For the big 12 debut for Houston and the bats have responded. 12 runs for the Cougars. Shelby Smith back to the circle to face Viviana Martinez. It's Martinez, Good, and Maloney do up for Texas. Strange game. Virtually every base runner that Houston has put on the plate has scored. 12 runs, one left on base. Texas pretty efficient too. Seven runs, just four left on. Both teams capitalizing with their opportunities. In the opening, we talked about RBIs and home runs and batting averages and all that. We're seeing this turn out to be what this game is all about. Pitching has been good, but the batting and the hitting has been tremendous really since the very first pitch of this game. Lifted into center. Kennedy Thomas in left center makes the catch. Martinez retired, 0 for 2 with the walk. Kennedy Thomas has fun out there. Has that pre-pitch hop before every pitch thrown. Gets her into a routine towards second base. That's Leanne Good. A tough inning for her defensively. Two wide throws, but I think as a first baseman, you expect to bail out your teammates a little bit. Well, you do. You're the infield's catcher. And, you know, sometimes when you get caught up, even, you know, being a shortstop, when your momentum takes you another way, you, you really hope that your first baseman can pick you up sometimes when you make that wide throw. Drea Coleman started the rally with the walk in the fourth, and an eight-run fourth. Again, Texas, most runs it had allowed in a game this season was four and an eight inning loss to Stanford. This team has been dominant to get to the number one ranking. Against a very good schedule. High pop up on the infield. Rollin takes charge. The third baseman makes the catch. Good is retired and there's two down in the fifth. It looks like to me that Shelby might be going up a little bit, maybe a little rise ball action. Got the last two. Longhorn hitters to pop up. Here's Ashton Maloney. 0 for 2. Grounded out in the second or last time lined out to the third baseman, Rollin. Smith now 2 and 2 thirds innings behind the starter, Paris Lehman. Smith has yielded three hits. She's walked two has not struck out a Texas hitter. She has really depended on that defense. Line towards left center, long run. It's Thomas, the left fielder, cutting in front of Kennedy Thomas. Janaya puts it away. It's a one, two, three, eight softball. We saw the brand new ballpark in Norman with the three great crowds last weekend. Yeah, it's just really amazing as a former collegiate athlete to see this happening. Um, all these opportunities for some of the young female athletes to get an education, travel around and see the world, and play for their favorite teams. Here's Mandy Esman. Transfer from Michigan State. She's had a bit of a humbling experience in some ways. She was According to Coach Vesely and Nadia Taylor, one of the top dogs of the Spartans, but she comes to a Houston team with maybe a bit more experience at the plate. She was the leadoff hitter on opening day. In fact, 21 of her 23 teammates listed her as their leadoff if they were drawn the lineup. Struggled a little bit with the bat, now hitting down in the order, but Coach Vesely says the power is there and her defense has been excellent. And part of this is just getting your confidence over here in the Big 12. And, you know, it's people talk about hitters getting into a slump or hitters not seeing the ball well. It takes one opportunity to change that, one chance. I think with Houston, the numbers look good, but the opponents, apart from the LSU tournament, are not power five quality by and large. Some numbers put up against some 
teams that are not really in the realm of Big 12. They went to LSU. They had an opportunity to beat LSU in one of those games. Bases loaded one out in the middle innings, chance to take the lead. They could not. End up losing that game 10-3. Had a chance against Boise State. But apart from that weekend, this would be a big jump in competition for Houston. The bats have responded as Espen fouls it off. Well, I think there's something to be said about being at home. I mean, they're 10-2 and two at home this season, 16-5 and five overall. And they certainly seem to be comfortable here. So many Texas fans, so many Houston fans here sharing the stadium together tonight. Esmond fooled a good off-speed pitch there. Another strikeout for Simpson. That was a really great changeup. She'd been throwing up, up, brought the ball in, and really took a lot off of this pitch. She probably That pitch was probably somewhere around 48 miles an hour. Really got her off balance and able to get the K. First pitch low to Amanda Carden. And Amanda, she's been playing some great defense in the outfield. We'll see if that translates over here to herself at the plate. She was in that controversial play over at first base with the possible tag, miss tag that the umpires went and took a look at on replay. Harden takes the ball, far left side of your screen. Nadia Taylor, first year hitting coach. A big reason for this offensive resurgence, Coach Vesley said she fired herself after two years running the offense and let the former Texas Longhorn run the show in her first year after coming over from Michigan State. So Taylor is facing her former team. And you have a lot of players with Power 5 experience, first year in Houston. The offense has been outstanding. And Coach Vess often says they have to stay with the plan we give them at the plate, and I think they've stuck with the plan tonight. Yeah, and Bree Can too even talked about Coach Nod about how important it was that she made hitting make more sense to her. And I thought that was interesting coming from a senior playing at NCAA D1 softball that Coach Nadia just made it make sense, and I, I really appreciate that about that. Cardin to shortstop, Martinez across to good. Cardin retired for the second out. Now the lineup flips to Lair Boutte. Coach Vesley talked about the importance of getting Texas roots back in the program. Nadia Taylor played a Texas from Humble, just north of town, near the uh, George Bush Airport. Still plays professional softball. So you have two current pros on the staff, Hope Troutwine and Nadia Taylor, Troutwine handles the pitchers. Taylor instructs the hitters. Coach Vesley more of a CEO managing the overall program. Still coaching third. And Lair Boutte has been completely dialed in this entire game and been fantastic in the leadoff position and is hitting the ball more like a slugger rather than a leadoff hitter. Good off speed pitch, Boutte swings and misses. She got fooled again on that, that devastating changeup that Simpson has. And Nadia Taylor, great hitter at Texas. Career 337 hitter in her four seasons. And a fun fact about her, after her playing career was over as a softball player, she played one season for Texas basketball. Two and two the count for Lair Boutte. Two down in the fifth. Bounced up the middle. Backhand play there for Alyssa Washington over to first. And Simpson has a 1-2-3 fifth. And the Texas Longhorns need to get their bats going. They've got six more outs for opportunities to score. Angel of Texas as part of the five-run third. Shelby Smith back to the circle. Bella Dayton leads off for the Horns here in the sixth. Houston's first game in the Big 12, a five-run lead, thanks to an eight-run fourth inning. And Texas, just one loss on the season, a 4-3, eight-inning defeat against Stanford. Trying to get things going against Smith. 
Smith hits the inside. And I'm just watching the battle that's going on here between Bella Dayton and Jasmine Rollin. I mean, she's right on her front porch as she's trying to lay down the bunt here or attempted to lay down the bunt to read this defense. Dayton doubled and scored in the third. She walked and scored in the fourth, hitting ninth. Very productive night at the plate. Outfield is deep. I think outfield is gonna be a deep for every Texas hitter here tonight. Even for a player showing bunt. I think with her speed, they're trying to keep the ball in front of her and avoid a triple off the bat of Dayton as we saw her speed on that double a few innings ago. Yeah, and it's a 3-1 count. It's Bella's advantage right here. She's looking for her favorite pitch right in her hot zone, something that she can drive. And there for a strike. Again, Paris Lehman started this game. Smith behind her. Tamaya Waiters is the other available pitcher. She has been more of a starter this season. Lehman two innings, Smith three innings behind her. Fouled off by Dayton. This is a very important hitter for Smith. It's a leadoff batter with the five run lead, but the Texas order turns over with Caden Henry on deck. And she is a leadoff hitter in her own right. I mean, Coach, Coach uh, White talked about, he put her down there at nine because maybe she doesn't have the power because of her hand, but she's a leadoff hitter. She's just sitting in the nine hole. And she draws a walk, a really good at bat from Bella Dayton who takes first. A lot of talk about where that pitch was, where that call's made. Umpiring is probably not the easiest job to have at this ballpark tonight. Caden Henry, flick of the wrist for a home run to left her last time. That's over the inside for a strike. Texas has three homers, Caden Henry. Doesn't look like they're thinking about any small ball here, even though Jasmine Rollins creeping up from third, they look like they're hitting away. Jolie Mitchell and Alyssa Washington also with the home runs. But just six hits for Texas, a team, one of the best offenses in the country. They've scored seven runs. Bounce to the right side, Boutte has it, takes the sure out to Cantu. Dayton takes second, one down here in the Texas sixth. A really good job by Shelby Smith too. She went up, she went down, and then she came back in on Henry's hands there. Really controlled that at bat. Mia Scott. A walk in the third, plus a pop out and a fly out. Over the outside for a strike. And that ball was right over the black, black part of the plate, away from her throwing hand, so it's crossing across Mia Scott. Really arm side part of the plate there, trying to get her to pull something over back to Lair or Bree Cantu's area of the field with Bella Dayton on second. And really, Bella's run doesn't matter that much to them right now. They need to get some outs of these Longhorn players. Over the inside for a strike, one and two. Jolie Mitchell on deck, two for two, plus a walk. Feels like Texas cannot zero in on one side of the plate. Smith is mitching. Mixing locations and speeds quite well here in the sixth. Yeah, she's really gone east to west really well in the last couple of innings. Up and away there, two balls, two strikes. Texas, number one of the D1 softball and ESPN USA softball polls, number two in the FCA poll and softball America. High chopper, fair ball over the glove of Cantu. Scott hustling to second. Instruction. 
She's on second, and she collided there with Cantu. Dayton scores from second. I think they're going to charge interference there on Cantu to slow down Scott as he tried to make her way to seconds. I don't think that was intentional. I think she was trying to make a play on the ball and then got back over into the field. I don't think she was intentionally trying to block Mia. If you, if you watch that, it was a pretty close type of play, but Mia Scott's going to end up on second base either way. Yeah, and I would say you have to be aware. You're playing it first. You know what happens when they round first. We've all played this game a long time. You know what happens after a single down the right field line. And I think Bree almost just really didn't know if Mia was going to run through the bag and stop in shallow right field or make the turn for second. So to me, it almost looked like she wasn't sure which direction that Mia was going to go in. Coach, Either way, it's still interference. Coach Vesley out of the dugout. And you wonder if this is just Coach Vesley trying to slow the momentum a little bit, giving her defense and pitcher a break. Don't let Texas get too much momentum at the plates. Very important in this game, whether it's the first inning or the sixth inning where momentum lies. And it takes one thing, one thing to change. We saw the Cougs. It was a couple of hits, hit batsmen. Now we see a ball that, you know, it's kind of one of those kind of accidental barely fair balls out in right field. Next thing you know, you got another run scoring and then you got another duck on the pond there at second. Jolie Mitchell, very impressive tonight. A booming three run homer at the very top of the scoreboard. Uh, damaged the H in the U of H logo up there. Also a double and a walk. Jolie didn't necessarily like that called strike, but that's not where she, where her hot zone is anyway. She likes the ball middle in, something around just above her belt line that she can handle. Outside for a ball. Outfield extremely deep. I don't think the outfield has moved much. Maybe right and left, but not too much in against these Texas hitters. Kennedy Thomas is, from our perspective, looks like she's about four steps from the warning track. Protecting there, Mitchell fouled it back again. Smith continues to move it right and left. A lot of east-west tonight from Smith. Mm -hmm. And that previous pitch, she was in on her hands a little bit and down, and then she went right back away. And Jolie's a, you know, a great hitter. She's a senior. She knows that the umpire is going to call that pitch on the outer half of the plate, so she's got to protect. One ball, two strikes. Just off the plate. The Texas batters have not struck out tonight. They've walked five times. Excellent plate discipline. And that was a really good pitch as well and a really good take on Jolie Mitchell's part on that changeup. Chop to third. Rowland looks to second, late throw, not in time. She double clutched. And now there's two aboard for the dangerous Reese Atwood. And Jasmine normally makes this play. She's a real savvy uh, base runner and a real savvy uh, infielder, but just takes that extra double clutch. She probably didn't need. She was trying to pull Mia off a second, which makes both of them safe. Here's Reese Atwood. 10 homers on the season. Atwood was hit in the helmet last time by Shelby Smith, took it on the left side. Has also popped up twice. Yeah, she's been hot early in this season. She's been pretty quiet here in this game so far. Drills that towards the Texas bullpen on the hands. Good pitch again from Shelby Smith. Yeah, moving that left and right, all east and west. Frustrating Atwood a little bit, kind of giving herself a little self pep talk there at the plate. Really kind of looks to me that she's trying to 
think about getting her hands clear on that inside pitch. We'll see if she goes in again on her. She ropes it to right center. It bounces off the base of the wall. Scott scores. Mitchell held it third. RBI double for Reese Atwood. And it makes it a 12 to nine game. Well, I thought this was a good pitch by Shelby Smith. She was out over the plate, almost a ball. But Reese Atwood was able to take the barrel of her bat and hit it right off of the base of the fence and score one. Mia, Mia Scott comes in easy on that double. I mean, you've got the captain of the Longhorn team here at the plate, and she's the tying run at the plate. So the best thing you can do in the circle here is just, uh, you know, take your breath, get your rhythm, and try to keep the ball down and in this small ballpark. Washington, a homer in the third against Smith. Also a pop-up and a fly-out. Good start for Lehman. Hits the outside for strike one. And the Houston defense is playing in normal depth. Lair Boutte may be having one step in just a little bit, but Essman's playing back normal depth. Outside for a ball. Only crooked innings here tonight. Houston four in the first, eight in the fourth inning. Texas had five in the third, two runs in the fourth, two runs and counting here in the sixth. Washington against Lehman. And that's a really good pitch. She took something off of that, left it elevated in the zone a little bit but took a little bit off to try to get Alyssa off balance. Adea Wallace has come on as a pinch runner on its second base. Hits a right, Cardin comes in. She makes the catch. Mitchell tags from third, the throw in time! Amanda Cardin throws out Jolie Mitchell to end the sixth. This is a discussion here Coach White is having at the home plate. Another really, really controversial call in this very important Big 12 game, but heck of a play by Amanda Cardin out in right field to make to throw an absolute laser into home and catch Jolie Mitchell as she slides in at the plate. And it's a bang, bang play, but she looks like she gets her. Certainly a very close play at the plate. Umpires will go review this one. If the call stands, it's a 12-9 game going to the bottom of the sixth. If it's a safe call at home, it makes it 12-10. Texas still batting. Well, Amanda Cardin got a lot on that throw. She sort of caught it flat-footed, but still had the hop and enough momentum towards home. Yeah, her first step was back, which is what you want as an outfielder to do. Your first step is back, read that play. But normally, whenever you're moving forward, you have that kind of crow hop jump. And she was able almost to make that throw with a dead, uh, dead shot right there to home plate for Taria Coleman to make the tag. Again, I think it's very important that the umpires get this call right for all these student athletes and these programs who are wanting to win the Big 12. And that's Coach Singleton over there, along with Coach Zaleski, chatting with their staff and their infielders and seeing how this is going to play out. Originally recruited as an assistant coach by Coach White because Coach White appreciated Steve Singleton's swing thoughts. Coach White said it doesn't always transition from baseball to softball. Coach White said Steve Singleton's an excellent recruiter, pounds the pavement out there 14 hours a day, always creating relationships. 
and a great memory for names and faces, which I'm sure is a big help on the recruiting trail. We look at this call at home. Yeah, it's a bang bang play. It may be difficult to see from this angle, but as a general rule of thumb, if the tag is applied high, it makes you think that the foot or the hand got in to the plate before the tag was applied. And they're also most likely checking to see if Jolie Mitchell was impeded trying to get to home plate. And the we'll see what the right call is. The call is safe. The inning continues for Texas. Jolie Mitchell is safe at home. Now Wallace will move to third base. It's 12-10. Now Wallace was standing at second during the video review. Talking with Christian Zaleski, second year assistant coach. And coach White said, I really liked how Christian Zaleski handled herself as the first base coach at Oklahoma. Now it feels like the challenge is being challenged. A second look for the umpire crew. Yeah, maybe they've got another view from the cameras that we've not been able to see up on our end. Definitely having a full discussion to make sure they get this call correct. And Coach Zaleski is still out along the third baseline talking to her young pinch runner that's coming in about how important this is. They've got two outs. You're going to be running on contact. Maybe one out and kind of uh, planning ahead for what she needs to be thinking about, depending on what they call here with this play at the plate. And Shay, the original challenge from Texas could be that Taria Coleman is set up blocking the plate before the throw gets there because you see the route to home from Jolie Mitchell. It's kind of a rounded route, like she is trying to avoid Coleman and that's why she might be late. So that could be the original challenge from Coach White is that Coleman is impeding the path to home. The second review is to see if Jolie Mitchell left third base early on the sacrifice fly. She did not. The run is confirmed, 12-10, two down in the sixth. Texas still batting. Well, the umpiring crew is definitely earning their money tonight. Tracy Laycock behind the plate, Terry Holt at first, Mike Burwell at third. Wallace, the pinch runner, goes back to third to second base. Beg your pardon. And there is, after all of this, two outs in the inning with a runner on second. Viviana Martinez, the shortstop, stands in as the potential tying run against Paris Lehman. 0 for 2 with the walk tonight. She walked against Lehman. Hopped up towards second. Lair Boutte and shallow right makes the catch, and the inning is over. That was a long, really, really complicated inning. Horns have three long balls. Simpson back to the circle to face Kennedy Thomas. Pitch gets away. Simpson, the third pitcher used by Coach Mike White today. Silali Gutierrez recorded just one out in the first. Estelle Check, three innings behind her. Simpson has worked one and two-thirds innings. And Thomas takes a strike. And I think Thomas, you know, she's looking to punch the ball through somewhere. She's got that split grip. If you guys are able to see her hand, she kind of has her hand split a little bit, a little bit more barrel head control with that top hand. Ball in the dirt. Two and one the count on Kennedy Thomas. 
double in the first, a ground out to shortstop in the third. Reached on an error in the fourth inning. There's that change up from Simpson again. Just hits the ball a little bit too low in the dirt. Good job by Atwood to dig it out. Three one count, hitters count. And Thomas takes first, she has good speed. And that's how the sixth inning opens for Christian Vesley and the Cougars. Yeah, and I was watching um, Atwood behind the plate in between innings. She was actually on her right knee and threw a absolute BB down to second base. So they're gonna make sure that they've got all the plays in the right places before they take off on Reese Atwood. Jasmine Rowland takes over the inside for a strike. Kennedy Thomas, eight for eight stealing bases this season. Jasmine Rowland, a two-run homer to right field in the first, a three-run homer to left field in the fourth. She's accounted for five of Houston's runs tonight. Good off-speed pitch. Rowland was fooled. Really, really great pitch, and we know how good of a hitter Jasmine Rowland is, and and I think that that was one of the best change-ups I've seen Sophia Simpson throw tonight. Simpson, great strikeout stuff. A strikeout situation here against Jasmine Rollin. And Rollin fooled again by the change-up. No throw needed down to first. So the base runner there, and now it's Bree Cantu. Yeah, I think if Mike White, when he thinks about how Sophia Simpson can pitch, it's that way. Change up, something up out of the zone with a rise ball, come back with a change up and get somebody chasing. Here's Bree Cantu. She walked and scored in the fourth, has also grounded out to second base twice. Fastball hits the outside. And I think for Bree, she's just been kind of looking that other way. Simpson's the hardest thrower that we've that the uh, Cougs have seen tonight here at the stadium, and maybe the hardest thrower that we've seen here tonight at the stadium as well. Thomas is running. The pitch gets to the backstop. Thomas stops at second. Ninth stolen base this season for Kennedy Thomas, more than she stole all of last season at Cal. And this ball just squibs right below the glove of Reese Atwood and trickles to the backstop. I think if Kennedy would have been looking in as she ran, because she's looking for a straight steal, if she would have taken a peek in before that turn, she might be standing on third base. Nice location with the fastball, one and two. Yeah, I think that was probably a, maybe a little bit of a screwball on the outside part of the plate, but it was had a high velo for sure. Taria Coleman's on deck. Cantu battling in a one-two count. Kennedy Thomas standing on second. Hit to the right side, Alyssa Washington, sidearm over to good. Kennedy Thomas up to third and two down in the six. And you know, Matt, that's just as good as a bunt. I mean, that's almost like playing small ball. And that just says something about Bree Cantu's ability to control her barrel head, to hit the ball to the other side of the field to advance the runner to third. Coleman struck out her last time in the fourth inning against Simpson. Cantu. Back in the dugout, Coleman takes a ball. She lined a home run over the wall and right in the first. A walk in the fourth. Big spot in this game. Houston wants insurance before the seventh. Again, Coleman takes one and one. Ooh, she was reason she had that one back a little bit. Just got her a little bit off balance with changing that speed just enough but that was really right where Taria likes to hit that, those blasts. High fly ball to right at the warning track. Henry makes the catch. Coleman just missed it. Yeah, she just got underneath that pitch and probably wishes she had that one back. We go to the seventh, Houston. The most wins in NCAA history with 1,707 wins. 
Bottom three in the Texas order, beginning with Leanne Good, Maloney, and Dayton to follow against Paris Lehman, who the life of a pitcher you never quite know. She left this game in the third inning. She comes back behind Shelby Smith, trying to close out and finish what she started. Another good off-speed pitch in there, and it's 0-2. You know, the, this stadium is really into every single pitch. Everyone is on the edge of their seat. Some folks thought it was an excellent pitch. The folks over at Texas thought it was a little high in the zone. 0-2. Script is short. Esman fields, throws in time. Close play at first. Good is called out on the throw from Andy Esman. And this was a close play because you know, Good had to really reach for that change up and sling it out over, and Esman had to make a charge on the ball. And because the ball was hit slowly, it made it a bang-bang play. Ashton Maloney with one down. That was very close at first. Maloney 0 for 3, grounded out her first time, line to third. Her second trip, last time up, flied out to Janiah Thomas. The excitement in this stadium is building. I mean, the drama is building with every single pitch. It's an even count here. Time called. Rollin, a few steps in front of third. Can't two. Near the line and up at first. Outfield shaded towards left. Maloney trying to get on base for Dayton. Showed a bunt, took a ball, close pitch on the outside part of the plate. They're just checking with a third base umpire to make sure she didn't go on that. He called it a ball. Fouled off. Coach White described Ashton Maloney as at her best with two strikes. She finds a way to get on base and get the offense going. And she led the team last year, 382 batting average. So she knows how to make, she knows how to put the ball in play. This is a, this is a very good, very good battle here. Two balls, two strikes. One down in the seventh. And she watches that miss. Full count for Maloney against Paris Lehman. And this ball is just off of the plate. Taria Coleman tries to frame it. From our standpoint, it does look close, but it does appear to be off the plate. Lehman took a long walk to the back of the circle. Three balls, two strikes. Maloney fights it off. Rollin hoping for a play. It's into the first row behind the Texas dugout. Yeah, I'm surprised Jasmine Rollin didn't climb over the dugout and up into the stands to try to make that play. Hopefully all the Longhorn fans are safe over there. Hit to second, two hops for Lair Boutte. Her throw in time, Maloney tried the head first slide, two down for Texas in the seventh. Lair Boutte has played some excellent second base uh, here tonight, had a lot of opportunities, and really has to get rid of the ball quickly here. Maloney gets down there at about 2.6. Most of the people say don't dive, it slows you down a little bit to go ahead and run through, but it tells you the effort Maloney's trying to make to make herself safe. Last chance for Texas, Bella Dayton. Dayton's been excellent, has scored three runs. She doubled and scored in the third, walked and scored in the fourth. 
And in the sixth, Taria Coleman out to the circle. Texas, reached number one in a few polls this week. Number two in a few others. 19 and one, only loss. An extra innings, a 4-3 loss against Stanford. Defensively, they were chatting a little bit about watching Bella Dayton's feet, whether she's going to bunt, slap, or hit away. And that was something that Jasmine Rollins just told the rest of the infield to look for. In the zone for a strike, one and one. Caden Henry on deck, atop the Texas order. She hit a home run earlier. Much of this crowd on its feet. A sellout at Cougar Softball Stadium. One and one on Dayton. Called a strike one and two. Yeah, Bella will have to open up her zone a little bit here and protect. But this is a great off-speed pitch. That's what makes these elite pitchers special. They've got the hard stuff, they've got the medium stuff, and they've got the slow stuff with control. One ball, two strikes. Just a bit high. Two balls, two strikes. Rowland telling Coleman, good location with the glove. Yeah, really, really good pitch, but well off the plate. They're just really trying to get that call. Bella Dayton with a good eye at the plate. Caden Henry on deck. Two balls, two strikes on Bella Dayton. Strike three. Paris Lehman strikes out Bella Dayton and Houston enters the Big 12 with its first win over a